cereal is like my favorite vice food. And it's been around in America since about the 1800s when several doctors believing in the Seventh-day Adventist uh, food mantra of vegetarianism and whole grains began looking for a way to feed it to their patients at these sanatoriums. Now sanatoriums at that time weren't hospitals. Think of it as a, uh, as a health spa promoting total wellness. Well, a lot of them sprung up in Battle Creek, Michigan, and someone that ran the Battle Creek Sanatorium was a guy by the name of John Harvey Kellogg, if that name rings a bell. He invented a, a dried corn flake that could be soaked in water and then eaten. But they did believe in a bland diet, so that was perfect. But he invented this corn flake with his brother, Will. Now, the problem started when Will decided that he wanted to take that flake and apply a lot of sugar to it. And so he broke off, started his own company, which we know now as Kellogg's, and started mass producing uh, sugary cereals to the masses. He is the true American hero to me. So just like with anything else in history, from there, lots of inventions started to follow. In 1901, a botanist by the name of Alexander P. Anderson was doing an experiment, and he was trying to determine the amount of moisture in a grain of starch. So he took some cornstarch, and he took some wheat grains, and he put them in test tubes, and cooked them in an oven, to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So as he takes them out of the oven, he breaks the test tubes with a hammer and a small explosion occurred. And it turns out that the molecules contain uh, little droplets of water. And as the temperature rose in the oven, the pressure built in the test tube. When he broke the test tube, the pressure dropped dramatically and quickly, which means the droplet of water flashed into steam, boom, and it puffed the cornstarch into this white puffy mass. Now, these two cereals are made of corn, and if you remember from a popcorn episode, there's a small droplet of water inside of the popcorn kernel. And when it's brought up to the right temperature, it will overcome the outer harder shell kernel and vaporize quickly into steam, blowing the shell open and creating the white puffy popcorn that we all love. Now, cereal producers at that time have an abundance of other grains like barley and rice, and they could also create a puff cereal if only barley and rice had an outside external hard shell. Enter the puffing gun. Now, the puffing gun is called a puffing gun because, no joke, the original was made from a cannon, a working cannon, from the Spanish-American Civil War. So it's a pretty simple concept. The cannon or the vessel that looks like a cannon is the outer shell. So in goes the rice, in goes a little bit of water. They close the lid, which has a quick release bar, which will come into play later. So it goes over a heat source and they turn it continually, 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 until the pressure builds up, which I've read, depending on the grain, is somewhere between 150 and 200 PSI. At that right time, someone will quickly release that hammer, I call it a hammer bar because they hit it with a hammer, and boom, the pressure drops so fast that the water inside flashes the steam very violently, and out comes a large plume of steam, but at the time, all the moisture that's been soaked up by the rice quickly flashes and puffs up the rice. Now from there, they'll take them and bake them and add lots of sugary goodness to make one of my favorite cereals. Now, growing up, here's the deal. I got a vent about this. My mother would take the puffed rice that is just plain, and then she would take this stuff and she would mix them together so that we didn't eat too much sugar. So what I would do is I would get up at seven in the morning before my brother, pick through it and make a bowl of this stuff and leave him with the plain puffed rice. That's how I do it. So anyway, kind of neat too, I'm gonna to include some videos. This is pretty common street fair in a lot of cities. Uh, in China, the street vendors love this because it attracts lots of tourists because of the loud boom that goes off in the steam cloud. It's a pretty cool little show. So maybe you knew that puffed cereal was made with steam. And if you don't, you do now because you watch Steam Culture. So thanks for joining me. Go out and find us on Google and look for puffed cereal. Put steam in your, uh, in your search description and you'll get all this good information. And meanwhile, I'm gonna work something up for you next week. Go enjoy some puffy cereal. See you next week.